so it's uh, to the far end of the world. I think from here, that is the end of the world, where I came from. I'm not used to note. I prepared my note, but at last the Holy Spirit said, I am your note. You are my mouth. So I'm going to share what the Holy Spirit puts into my heart tonight, my testimony, which is a real story about my life and my family. In the year 1968, I gave my life when I was 19 years old. And I got married. I have three children. As you heard, you know, the second seed that has fallen into a ground, but less soil, with stone. But when temptation comes, the plant with it. That was my life. I was tempted and got backslidden with three children. I left my family for nine years and I went into the world and enjoyed the pleasures of the world. And the Lord said to me, do you know the story of the prodigal son? Yes, I do. That is your story. I started off with something I have a house, I have my saving in the bank, I have a few things in my pockets, I use, I use it in the world for pleasure's sake, and I lost it all. For nine years, I got from something to nothing, just like the prodigal son, he lost it all. If someone is hearing me tonight, do not become a backslider. You will lose it all. Whatever you have it now, it's going to be gone if you lose your Jesus Christ. During that nine years, for six years, I served the devil. I was the devil worshiper, Satan worshiper for six years. I talked to the devil devil talks to me and I do what he wants for six years but I thank God for my wife during that nine years he con she continued to pray and she prayed really hard and supported by her church together they prayed for me for me to come back some said to her to divorce me but she didn't she confessed, she believed that I will come back. Even though it was difficult because I was serving the devil. And yet, at last, God won the battle. Because of the prayer of the righteous, the Bible says, the prayer of the righteous man avails much. So to those who are listening to me tonight, if you are a single mother, don't give up. Continue to pray. I'm the living example. If the Lord did it to me, it can, the Lord can do it to you too. For nine years, God brought me back. How? It was not by a sermon preached, or a scripture taught, or by someone sharing to me. It was Jesus himself who appeared to me. I was crossing our nation, one of our national parks, in the noonday, I heard a voice coming from heaven saying, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And I turned to where the voice was coming from. When I looked up to the sky, the sky was like a TV screen. And on this screen, I saw a long banquet table. I didn't see the two ends. Right at the center of the table stood Jesus Christ, dressed in white, looking down at me. When he saw me looking up at him, he then said this word to me. Tell me, what blessedness is that money that you are looking for? At that time, being a backslider, money was my God. 
I can crook, I can steal, I can do whatever I can do as long as I got my money. What blessedness is in that money that you are looking for? I, with my spiritual eyes, I can see the difference and I did a comparison of that money and I look at the glory of that place. How glorious that place. And I compare the two. I found money was like an animal dung. That was enough for my conviction. And that convicted me to turn back to God. I look around in the park for a pastor, for a man of God to pray over me. But there were two pastors. God brought them that day. I went to them. These two pastors know me very well. And they were surprised for me to come back to them, telling them, I want to come back to the Lord. Please, would you please pray for me? And I gave my life back to the Lord that day. And I got the joy of the Lord back into my life. But I was staying with the wrong woman. And I got the revelation from the Lord. I got the bubbling from the Lord. I got the joy of the Lord. Every time I go to church, I always cry and weep. But I was staying with the wrong woman. Every morning, I didn't miss my morning prayer, my quiet time with the Lord. I used to tell, I used to tell the Lord every morning when I go to the Lord in prayers, Lord, I love you, I love you, I love you. And that morning, the Lord said to me, I know that you love me. None has ever come to know me without my word. All of you, you have come to know me because you have heard my word. <coughs> I want to tell you today that me and my word, we are one. <coughs> if you are telling me that you love me, then love my word. <coughs> Excuse me. Because me and my word, we are one. My word is not different from me. And I was convicted. And I said, yes, Lord. And the Lord said to me this. Tell me what my word says to you. Till today, I'm wondering who put that word into my mouth. Because so many scriptures in the Bible. And yet God just put one word into my mouth. Do you know that one word? This one word came into my mouth. I said to the Lord that morning, one wife. I've got three wives. The Lord said to me, one wife. And I said to the Lord, and the Lord said to me, then, that was enough for my conviction. That day I decided to go back to my legal wife, the mother of my three children. Two of them are here tonight. One back in Fiji. And I went back to my wife. When I went back to my wife, the Lord said to me, I want you to pray and seek me earnestly. God spoke to me in the night. Psalm 55. Concerning David, because he prayed three times. And you are to pray to me. Seek me earnestly. So I started to seek the Lord in prayers. And I prayed for hours, six hours, seven hours, even eight hours at one time. Sitting right there before the Lord, hungering for God, thirsty for his presence. And I used to hear God speaking to me, pointing my weakness, saying to me, you are to repent of this sin. Sometimes I argue with the Lord. And then... There was a time when I saw the devil that I used to worship appear in my room. And the devil said to me, don't repent. Go back to that woman. The Lord appeared to me and said, no. The day you're going to leave this house, see what's going to happen. Another TV screen. And I saw my children, my two sons, going to go in and out of jail. 
And what will happen to you? Can you see yourself? You're going to get sick. And in the sickness, you're going to die. See where you're going to go to. And I saw myself just about to be thrown into hell. And I cried. I really cried from my heart. And I said, no, Lord. And I found out that day, true repentance comes from the heart, not from the mind. And then the Lord said to me, you served the devil for six years. I want to give you a mission. Go and destroy the works of the devil in Fiji and other parts of the world. And that's how the Lord used me. For the transformation of a whole village that used to worship the devil. It's there, you know, YouTube. Call, let the Siri sound. When I go back tonight, go and see that YouTube. You'll hear me talking about the change that happened in that village. The transformation team taking those, those kind of transformation about the power of the gospel. They heard that story, they came to that island. They interviewed me. That village was known to become a witchcraft village. They believe in fire walking, red hot stone. They walk on barefoot. They try to put the handkerchief to prove how hot are those stones. Those handkerchiefs, they burn into ashes before they reach the stone. And yet, these people, they walk on that stone by the power of those demons. But because of the power of the gospel that changed my life from being a demon worshiper to become the vessel of God, to change a village that worshiped the devil. And it's not just a bit by bit change. Starting from the father, the mother, the children, all of them, it's a household salvation. Not only one family, almost all the families in that village. There was a big baptism. It's a big conversion. And I found out, this is what the Lord said to me. You were just like the prodigal son. And I want to tell everybody listening to this testimony. If you have no hope, no place to go to, the only place for you to go to, go back to Jesus Christ. To those single mothers, don't lose hope. Continue to pray. Because one day, you're going to see the hands of God. So if anyone listening to me tonight, the best place to be is to be with the Lord. I started with something, ended with nothing. The Lord opened my eyes. Can you see what the, level, what the devil did to your life? He took everything. You almost lost your life. Because of the prayers of the righteous, you got back to God. I want to say tonight, The only thing that we must do, we have to come back to Jesus Christ. There is hope in the Lord. There is hope in the Lord. There is hope in the Lord. And don't give up. And we were called at that time that we were poor. We got nothing. We lost everything. I have a house that I bought but I lost it we started off with nothing but we continue to believe in God and today I can say today that we are blessed God restored back everything the devil took away and I can say nothing is likened to come back to the Lord the best ever place to be is to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And God bless you all.